looking to move a number of those small SQL Server instances from on-premises or maybe even from Amazon RDS? Well, we're going to look at the benefits of instance pools today on Tales from the Field. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Welcome, my friends, to Tales from the Field. If this is your first time finding us, give us a like and hit that subscribe. We here on Tales from the Field like to drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays, we have this thing we call the Roundtable, where we share links or blogs put together by you, the MVPs of the Azure Data community for the Azure Data community. And then on Mondays and Wednesdays, we like to drop this thing we like to call MS Tech Bits. You're watching one of those now. Let's get over to it. All right, we're gonna start in the documentation today. What is an instance pool? In a nutshell, it's a cost-effective way of deploying multiple managed instances into a set of shared resources. What are some of the core benefits we get from this? We have the ability to deploy two core instances, which is huge. We have predictable and fast instance deployment. We're gonna look at that in this video. And we have cost-saving infrastructure when migrating multiple SQL Server instances to our virtual cluster. And on the screen here, you can see a brief diagram about our virtual cluster. So application scenarios, right? If we're migrating a group of small SQL Server instances at the same time, or you need quick and predictable instance creation or scaling, or you need having that fixed cost. So definitely recommend reading through those application type scenarios that we could use. All right, also we're gonna use this documentation there to create the instance pool or that's the inspiration. And I definitely recommend you come in here and look at the limitations to the instance pool. You wanna know if this is a right fit for you, but let's get to the demo, right? We're going to deploy an instance pool by typing in an instance pool and going in here and selecting create from the two options we have there. We're gonna fill in our project details and our instance pool details there. You can see I'm deploying to East US. Now we're gonna configure our instance pool. For our compute and storage for our service tier, we have general purpose. You can see there for our hardware, we have the standard series and we have the premium series and we are gonna choose the appropriate SQL Server license for our instance pool and we are going to hit apply. Once we hit apply, we're gonna select networking. In this case, I'm gonna let it choose the to configure the virtual network for me. You could have that set up ahead of time. We're gonna do additional settings here. You're gonna notice that we have our normal maintenance windows. We're gonna leave that as default. Then we're gonna fill in the appropriate tags and hit review and create. Then once we validate that everything is there we need, we're gonna go into the deployment process. And once that's done, we can go to our deployment page. There you can see it deployed our instance pool. That took about 45 minutes, folks, so not too bad. All right, here's our dashboard for our instance pool. We have nothing in here right now, but you can see where it tells us how many available vCores, our space, how many databases we have left based off of the configuration of our instance pool. Let's deploy a managed instance, y'all. Now, if these managed instances were in the same VNet and subnet, I can move them into our instance pool. That's one of the requ requirements, but they're not. So let's create a new managed instance. We're gonna go ahead and select create here. We're gonna select a resource group that contains our instance pool. That is a requirement in order for us to use instance pools or deploy our managed instance into our instance pool. We're gonna select yes for belongs to an instance pool. Then we're gonna select the instance pool that we created in the previous step. Now let's go ahead and configure our managed instance. You're gonna see the service tier and compute hardware, they're grayed out. They're controlled by the instance pool. On the screen, we can choose how many V cores we want to deploy and how much storage we want to deploy. Here, I'm gonna keep two V cores for this initial deployment. I could have that all the way up to eight if I wanted to, but I wanna put multiple managed instances here. We're gonna set up our backup redundancy and we're gonna select apply. Next, let's go to networking. Here on networking, we're gonna see that our networking is grayed out. 
it's going to deploy, and this is a requirement as well, to the VNet of the instance pool that we created when we deployed the instance pool. So that's part of the requirement to be part of this. Next, we're going to go to security. We're going to leave everything here as default, just showing that all things look like a normal managed instance deployment outside of that we're adding it to an instance pool. Going to put some tags in there. Then we're going to go over here to review and create. And once we see that everything looks like we expect it to, we're going to select the deployment. And look at that on the screen there. I wanted to show how quickly that deployed. It deployed in about eight minutes. And look at that on our instance pool dashboard. Now we can see that we're consuming two cores, some of our storage and the managed instance that's deployed there. Now let's go ahead and deploy one behind the scenes here. But once again, let's review some of these application scenarios. In this case, I'm thinking of migrating a group of small SQL Server instances at the same time. And I need that ability to only have two V core deployment, right? Review those applications and look at that another managed instance deployment in about eight minutes. So really predictable and reliable as well as really fast. So I can tear down and build up managed instances super quick. Now let's go to compute and storage. This is the coolest part to me. I'm going to scale this out to four V cores because I know for my testing, I want it to match as close to production. So I'm going to go ahead and do four V cores. I'm going to hit apply and look at that when it's done. It scaled that managed instance to two, four V cores within eight minutes. We couldn't do that with a normal managed instance. That would take hours normally. Once again, go back through and look at the limitations of an instance pool. And back here in our instance pool, you can see that we've consumed all of our eight V cores. And this is a good time to review some of the core benefits. The top one here is my favorite one. We can deploy to two V core instances. It's predictable and fast. We just saw that, right? It's very predictable and it's very fast when it comes to deployment. Look, I think there's a lot of cool scenarios that we can use this for. Dev test especially, we can tear that down or even staging. We could tear that down, build that up. We could scale up or scale down based on our needs when we're doing our testing. So dev may need four V cores today. Test may need four V cores tomorrow. We spin down dev, we spin up test, and then staging may need more. It may need eight V cores to match production. We can spin down our dev test environments to give more to our staging within our instance pools. I just see a ton of possibilities here. Let me know what you think instance pools can be used for. Let me know if you're using them today. We want to know. We want to get feedback since this is in preview. And as always, you know where we like to keep it going in the comments down below. And as always, be good to each other. Yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought.